Hey guys, Nate here. I thought I'd give you a little rundown on what to do after uh, you've got your power distribution board on your XBR done and now you want to you know, get the receiver, flight controller, uh, and everything set up as tightly and neatly as you can to have it fit underneath this hood. Uh, there's not a lot of room under there, that's why you got to be kind of nice and neat. First time I did it, I did it with a full maze board and uh, I decided I'm going to go with uh, this guy over here, which is the Afro Mini Naze. Same features, just very, very small. Uh, what I'm going to be using uh, to program the board is FTDI uh, board here. I'm using an orange RX R410X. I have a Pololu 5 volt uh, 800 milliamp step down, and I have uh, two pins. Actually, it's four pins, two sets of two. Really hard to see, but we're going to use that to attach these guys together. So before we get started, I just want to show you how you would typically do a full maze board setup, right? You would normally just solder in these uh, 90 degree pins. Hopefully you can kind of see that. Uh, you would just solder those in to the motor holes, just like this. And one of the motors would have a BEC, which means it provides 5 volts for the whole uh, everything here. The other ones would have the middle pin missing, which is where the 5 volts would normally come from. So instead of doing it that way, uh, oh, and then what you would do is you would attach your PW or your PPM, which is all the signals coming down one wire, to this little port here. This uh, the middle, the red one here would provide 5 volts to your receiver. And now, through that one motor mount, the one motor BEC would now power the naze board and through this one wire power your receiver. So it's kind of a big, kind of bulky setup, but let's see what it looks like when we try to make what they call the sandwich for the XBR. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do for the sandwich is we need to modify our receiver. Uh, let me move the Pololu out of the way and my FTDI out of the way, we don't need those right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to take away the heat shrink tubing, the heat shrink wrapping around here and we're also going to uh, start depinning a lot of these and, uh, or cutting them off directly. So I'll be right back. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut off a lot of these pins but I'm actually going to depin some of them also. The reason why is I'm going to use uh, these new pins to essentially flatten out and layer the, the two of these on top of each other, letting a pin span between them. There's a great other video on the sandwich uh, that I'll link to in the description. Definitely make sure to check that out. This is just my version with an orange RX receiver. So to depin, right, all we're going to try and do is try and just lightly grab one of the pins, heating it up just like this. And we're going to try and pull it out. Uh, getting a good angle on it is always the hardest. Let's try one of these outside ones instead. So heat it up so it gets nice and soft. Just working it out. That's the secret. So after fighting with it for a little bit, um, it's easier if you have more people, obviously. Uh, someone to pull, someone to heat, someone to hold. Uh, you can get all these pins out just by heating them up and slowly working them out, trying not to damage any boards. Now you don't have to pull all of them out, you, you can just cut a lot of them out. Now what I'm going to end up doing with my receiver before I, I just want to show you my game plan. So the Naze, uh, the Afro Amaze uh, Mini is going to be on top of my receiver. Okay, and What I'm going to have again is two pins, one ground, which would be this top left corner, and the uh, power, which is going to be the, this left side middle, is going to be two pins that is transferring through the, uh, the circuit, between both circuit boards. And the other two pins, I'm just going to have be the ground on this side. And I just do that just for stability, so that way I have a, two pins on either side kind of helping the structure stick together. So that's my game plan. Uh, and so basically I can cut off everything I'm not going to be using on here. So I can just kind of, oh, bing, it just went all over the place. 
but you can just cut them off low and not worry about ones you're not even going, you're not going to span uh, between the two boards. Again, I'm only going to have four pins that are spanning between the two boards. And so I'm going to cut off everything except for these four pins. I'm going to actually try and pull them out so I can create a nice clean hole and use some, uh, you know, simple solder wick to clean up the holes and make it so I can slide these guys in. Uh, and I'll show you what that looks like in just a minute. All right, super quick. This is what it looks like. I just went ahead and cut off everything. And I'm going to actually pull these two out. Again, you can see it is the top left and then the middle of this one, of this far left. And then the two front ones, which is just ground, of uh, this side. And again, this side is just for support. I don't need to have those grounds. All I really need are these two pins, one ground, one power. And that's going to come from my Pololu to power the, bo the nays and my receiver. Uh, and so this, this side, again, is just for support. So let's clean that up and start soldering some more. All right, so that was a little longer than I thought just to clean up the holes um, of the receiver. So as you can see, I, this is the bottom of the receiver here. I still have uh, some of the pins in there because I just chopped them off. I cleaned up four holes, uh, actually five. Uh, the fifth one I didn't worry about actually cleaning the hole, but I actually removed the pin. So it's kind of hard to see. See if I can get a good angle for you. So there's four pins sticking up that basically connect the two boards together. Three on the ground, which is this back line, right? Again, these these two on this side is just for are just for support, uh, and then these two right here, one's again ground, and the middle one is power. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach my Pololu to this spare line here, uh, ground and power, and that's going to actually power both boards at once. Uh, then I actually took I told you I, I desoldered five pins, so there's the four here, and then the fifth was actually um, this back corner one, which if we look at the sticker, I don't know if it's easy to see or not, uh, but if we look at the sticker it says bat bind as the bottom most pin. And that is actually the uh, same as the PPM on this specific receiver. So that means that my innermost pin here, which is the signal, is my PPM, PPM power ground. And so what I did is I took my PPM power ground. Well, I don't need the power ground of this PPM wire. That's the closest one here. So I just ran a wire from that uh, pin point all the way to the PPM in over here. And I don't need to run power or ground to the power ground, just as if I was going to use, right? So normally it would be, I'd chop the wire off of here, but um, you would connect signal, power, ground, and then go to your PPM. So instead, I just need the one wire because I'm not going to be... Uh, normally, you'd use the power in the ground to power the receiver, but we're doing that through these pins. So now you can see we have a nice, thin sandwich with our orange RX uh, R410X receiver underneath. So now let's finish wiring it up. Let's mount it to the quad and see how it all fits. So here is what it looks like. Um, so my power distribution board, I wired up the Pololu, so that is, let me get some pointers here, so voltage in, everybody see that okay? Yeah. Voltage in, coming to the voltage in, ground, coming to the ground, voltage out, coming voltage out, and I actually have uh, ground and voltage uh, out coming right here. Uh, I also wired up my... Uh, uh, FPV gear just so that way everything's underneath now I put in some of the VHB which is double sided stick tape extremely strong uh, just because that's what's going to have my sandwich it's going to mount to the underside here and just stick right there uh, you wouldn't think double sided stick tape is very good but this is the extreme 3M uh, stuff and it is way stronger than you need. It's a pain in the butt to get off if you <laughs> when you want to tear something apart. So extremely strong double sided stick tape is all you need. I did build up a little layer right here uh, because I do have my solder joints uh, that are raised just a little bit so that kind of makes this layer flat. 
and pretty much I've got about a square half inch of good stick and that's really all you need this thing's not going to be uh, jostling around too much, it's going to be underneath the hood and what I'm going to do next, and I'll show you next, is these two wires after I double check that I still get five volts with a voltmeter a multimeter, I am going to then wire them up uh, onto the sandwich and you'll see what that looks like next Okay, so here is the sandwich, double-sided stick tape right on top of that red square we saw. Just peel that off. Uh, the below Lou, which I confirmed with the voltmeter before hooking anything up, is feeding 5 volts. Uh, and I just attached that to the middle rail pin that I added on the far left. And I added the ground to the far, uh, on the far left on the first pin. And now I'm ready to just solder up my motor wires, signal and leave that one blank and then grounds for the first four pins here uh, and then I will be basically done I'll show you what that looks like in just a minute alright so almost done last thing we've got is the FTDI but here's what it looks like a uh, little sloppy but it gets the job done I double checked with you know big bright light to make sure all my connections looked good uh, basically you have back motor back right one, two, back left three, four as the motor position so you just plug it in one, two, three, four and uh, basically like I said the power distribution board is giving five volts or the, is giving twelve volts to the Pololu which is stepping it down which is then in turn giving to these two pins here and here on the nays board which remember those pins run through the uh, receiver, thus powering the receiver off of these two wires. And then again I have pins, just redundant pins helping for structure and for the ground over here uh, in the sandwich. Everything is pretty secure. I mean it's got a little wiggle but that's okay. It's not going anywhere. Uh, and now let's wire up the FTDI and we'll be done. All right, and it's done. So what we see here, uh, take a quick look at this wiring, because this is how you have to set up the FTDI. Uh, you know, uh, you've got, you got to remember that your RXs and TX is actually switch. So the RX on the board, which is actually <laughs> almost impossibly tiny to see, uh, just because it's pinned between this black bar and the uh, the jumper for the voltage on this one here it's right in that crack I didn't even realize it was there for the longest time uh, but basically your TX goes to the RX and your RX goes to the TX and then your ground it goes over by itself there it does skip one here so you can see I just used some hot glue and some uh, some of the uh, uh, servo cables and what I did is I also clipped off this first one because we don't use it so just so there's no confusion so that way they just plug right in just like this and plug your USB in uh, you do have to get the two uh, D2XX uh, drivers for the FTDI uh, board here I will oops, sorry. I will link that uh, in the description to get those, uh, to get those drivers they are pretty old. There is an, there's several later versions, but this board, this particular board, uses the older ones. Uh, and that's that's about it. I plugged it in, flashed it to the Beta Flight from Boris B. Uh, loaded up all my old settings from my big nays from a, a couple of flights that I did. And all we got to do now is uh, tuck everything underneath the hood. And with this FTDI out you know if I just kind of keep it tucked in the hood but kind of make it accessible I never have to take off my hood unless I damage the camera because I can always just take a pair of pliers and reach in there and uh, and grab this guy out so thanks for watching don't forget to to like and subscribe uh, if you have any questions or comments let me know I have spent a lot of time researching this and talking with with the guys uh, the other guys specifically and uh, Thanks, and I'll see you guys next time.